Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Matt Potts of Agility Works. In this video, we want to take a look at some of the various different ways we can load data into SAP HANA from our SAP ERP system. This follows on from a blog on our website entitled Beyond Business Warehouse. We want to use BW extractors or BW data sources to load SAP HANA, but we don't actually want to use or need a full-blown installation of uh, BW itself. We're going to be using data services and DXC in order to load the data but use the BW data sources as the mechanism. This is good because it gives us two main benefits. One, we can use all of the complex logic behind the BW data source. In other words, the multiple uh, table extractions from ERP and all of the logic that's going on there. And also it gives us the ability to use the delta mechanisms so we can capture the new or change records. The first thing we're gonna do is have a look at data services. Just before we do that, we're going to be loading the sales items table here in SAP HANA. The structure of the table already exists. We can also bring the structure through via data services as well. We've got no data in there at the moment, so that's what we're going to go and now load. So we're now in the SAP Business Objects Data Services Designer, and this is where we can create the data services job to actually load the data into SAP HANA from our SAP ERP system. Just before we create the job, we can see down in the, uh, the bottom of the screen, we've got a connection into our HANA system, which is our target system, and our ERP system, which is our source system. In both cases, we've already brought through into the data services designer the extract structure and the target structure. So the target structure is the sales items table that we're going to be loading. And in terms of the source or the extract structure, we're going to be using a logistics data source, a logistics extractor to load the data. So what we'll do now is create the data services job to join everything together. So I can create myself a new batch job. We'll just give it a bit of a description. So sales items for HANA. And then within that job now, I can create myself a data flow. Again, we'll just quickly rename the data flow. And then within the data flow itself, I can pick my source, which is the BW data source. I can pick the target, which is the sales item table in HANA. Make that a target. And then I'll just need to then use a query to join the fields together. and just maintain the field mappings in the query. So the fields of the data source and the fields of the target table. So we'll just make sure we select all of the fields or the majority of the fields in the BW data source and then map those across to the output fields in the target table. Okay, and once that's done, we can shut the query down We'll just do a very quick syntax check, just check it's happy with what we've done. We've got some warnings. We're okay in that particular instance. I'm then just gonna save everything that we've created and we're now ready to execute the job. So we'll click on okay. And then we'll see the log and the steps in the log start to run in order to start loading the data. So we'll wait for that to finish and then we we'll should see the results in the HANA system, we'll have our sales items loaded into the sales items table. So we can now see that the data services job has successfully finished. So we've loaded about 16,000 records into the SAP HANA table. So let's go back into the SAP HANA studio and refresh the table and we can now see we have loaded 16,000 records. So the next way of loading data into SAP HANA that we are going to take a look at is DXC, or Direct Extractor Connection. And this mechanism again uses BW data sources to load data into SAP HANA. But this way we don't need data services. What we're going to use is an embedded BW client within SAP ERP in order to load SAP HANA. So with ECC 6 or above, you have the possibility to create a new client in your existing ERP system and use that as a BW system rather than implementing a standalone BW instance. So again, using the BW extractors, there are some pros and cons um, between using data services and DXC in terms of the use of the BW extractors. One of the big advantages of DXC is that it, it supports all of the Delta um, 
functionalities of data sources. You can have a look at the blog on our website, which just goes into a little bit more detail on the pros and the cons of each method. So within the SAP HANA Studio, we have a specific schema for our DXC tables. And what we can see here is we've got a number of material tables, and these all relate to a single data source. Now, we don't create these actually in the HANA system themselves. When we activate a data source in the embedded VW system of ERP, it automatically creates the tables for us. We can focus on two of the tables that get generated. We get a table ending 00, zero. this is an active data table, and we have a table ending 40, and this is an activation queue. Very similar process to that of a DSO in VW. The fact that when we load data, we have to go through an activation process of a standard DSO. Very, very similar concept in here. So one of the things we can go and do now is go into our ERP system and I'm logged into the BW client of that ERP system. I'm going to go into the data warehousing workbench and what I'd like to do is load some of my customer master data. So I'm going to use the BW data source in order to do that. The first thing I need to do is activate it. So we'll just go and flip that into change mode and activate that. And what that's going to do, it's going to create those tables for me in SAP HANA. So it's doing this via an HTTP RFC connection. And then all I'll need to do after that is just create myself an info package to actually load the data. So we're not loading any data into BW itself. It's just purely a mechanism to move the data from ERP into SAP HANA. So we'll create ourselves an info package to load the customer master data. And we can do things like here, like initialize the Delta process or bring through the Delta records if we've already done the Delta process. In my case, I'm just gonna do a full update. And then all we need to do is just go and start that info package off. Again, if we wanted to schedule this, we could include these info packages in a process chain. So what we can do now is just go and have a look at the monitor behind this run of the info package, just to see how the, how the load is getting on. So you can see there it's now started. We'll do a bit of a refresh and we can see it's now starting to transfer the records into SAP. Hannah, we'll just let that complete. Let's just go back into the SAP HANA Studio. We can just do a right click and refresh the tables against this particular schema. And we should now see we've got some customer tables in there as well. And that's a result of activating the data source. So let's just go back into the ERP system. Now let's just refresh that job. So it's now finished successfully. We've loaded just under 8,000 customer master data records. Let's go back into the SAP HANA Studio. So I'm gonna go into this table here, ending 00, zero which is the active data table. We'll do a right click and open the definition of that table. And just go into the runtime. And there you go. So we've now got, again, the same number of records for our customer master data loaded in SAP HANA using a BW data source via DXC and that embedded BW system in ERP. Thanks very much for watching this video. Please ensure you visit our website to learn more about the Agility Works services and packages around SAP HANA and also for further articles, blogs and videos.